I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. On Monday, mm -hmm. I went to Trivia Night, and to avoid getting overly local, it's a bar across the street from BSP next to all of the other bars and around the corner from the bar you usually go to. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I know I don't drink and I don't go to bars in Kingston, but saying the bar across the street from BSP is like saying one of 30 bars. Yeah, yeah. So I did trivia night on Team Beef Squash, and Team Beef Squash consists of the waitresses and cook from the bar I usually go to. So What? <laughs> well, that's a thing. So we, we won trivia night, but it was it was very interesting. Um, yeah. We've got all topics covered. We've got perfect, like, team comp if this was a, a an MMO, right? We've got, like... Mm -hmm. dps tank healer and all that but across all the different trivia topics i covered so, star wars cosplay right i got star wars cosplay yeah they show an image on the screen it was someone dressed as admiral akbar dressed as a playboy bunny uh uh so i nailed that so i've got the nerd stuff down and some random stuff we've got good team comp but um it got interesting because the owner of the bar that i usually go to uh he, my barber, he bought an electric bike and it was assembled by my barber. So then he rides it into said bar. So if you, <laughs> so it's just an electric bike in the bar. And he, so he comes and he sits at a table and then like, so you have to, the, 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 the key is there's a big button that you press because mm -hmm. it's like Jeopardy style on the big screens and you buzz in. Yeah, yeah keep the button away from him because he just likes hitting the button especially when it's late and he's maybe had a couple uh... so he doesn't know any of the just slap so you keep the button away from him but then right now this That's is the game. this is round three every round the point values get higher if you get it wrong you lose more points uh -huh. we also yeah. by the way one of two teams that were even positive the whole time um <laughs> but they'd play like a boom like split second of a song and we and you got to buzz in but so it would buzz you'd hear the music We'd be discussing amongst each other, and then bar owner or, or, or like boss of other people at the table with me. Like he he's sitting at the table, and he's like, "Oh, that's Bon Jovi for sure!" Like just out loud, and we'd be ah. like, "Shut up! Shut up! What are you doing?" That's amazing. <laughs> like, oh boy! I although, so I've never been to bar trivia myself. It's fun. It's very much like Jeopardy. You don't have to yeah. drink. Like, I had mostly chicken wings. Uh, I will say this, though. Yeah. There were people one time when Lisa and I went to an Outback Steakhouse. Yes. Or was it an Applebee's? It was one of those two. Yeah. And they had a bar trivia night. Man, people were serious about it. It, for real, like, it's fun and it's like a fun environment. Everybody likes each other. But like shit does get real. We're like no one's no one's at the point where they're like, Judge like if you're playing Magic the Gathering, but there's a lot yeah. of people who get like up to that point almost where like they're like that like people are swapping up buttons because they're like ours isn't working because they're they're not getting like they don't feel like they're getting butt because everyone just starts smashing that button. Yeah. So they're like button switches and people are <laughs> like uh you know, sometimes the uh you're like, they'll say something or a team will get something right. And you're like, it could have been a hair more specific. But, you know, it's just fun. I like it. Oh, it's good. Oh, and then uh, the, so I, uh, so, <laughs> I almost used a real name. Uh, owner, of, uh, he, he social butterfly, he's floating around. And then yep, he comes, yep. makes his way back to the table. And <laughs> he's like. That, that's a paraphrase, but that's basically, he just, like, shooed, I think. He shooed some people, maybe. Or at least brought it to the attention of someone who could shoot people. 
because oh they were, God. and then he started making fun of them because there's this group of kids who are drunk on wine coolers. Just w- all right. Well, who did so? One, you're they. So they brought other stuff, and they were just outside of the bar throwing wine coolers at each other. And everyone was what? Like, who gets drunk on wine coolers? That is a weird thing to get drunk on, it's, especially outside of a bar. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and this is like an hour before before the uh, you know trivia ends or whatever. Yeah. So he, yeah. So we're just making fun, like, ah, who wears a white beater and gets drunk on wine coolers? So then it's over. Uh, I start walking back to the, my car for the night to go home, and um, I see five stadies on uh, North Front Stockade uh, area, like right that yeah. strip. Just five yeah. stadies. They got that entire group of kids who were just throwing wine coolers at each other. And it was the funniest thing ever, because they were just like, "No, I don't want to press charges. We don't have we don't have any issues with each other." And I, my head is like, "You clearly have issues with each other, but you oh, do you." What? <laughs> so it, it was just an interesting uh, Monday. I look yeah. forward to winning more trivia night. <laughs> Good lord. <sighs> <laughs> um. I didn't do much. I saw two movies last night. I know. One, so one, you have to tell me how is the new theater, and two, you have to tell me where, on what service you watched the other movie. So, I'll start with the second movie I saw, which was Detective Pikachu. There's the, okay, okay. That was the second movie I saw. Um, it was very good. Yeah. Uh... It's definitely a movie for people who like Pokemon. Okay, that's good though. Yeah, it, I like it's, Pokemon. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Uh, the actor who plays um, Tim, I think his name is something Smith. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. What, Lisa? Yeah, it is Tim. Okay. Yeah, so Tim is great. Um, I just hit my mic real hard. <laughs> um, Tim is great. Ryan Reynolds is great. Hey, 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 Smith. A reference to an anime we cannot talk about. Which mm. anime? That's the intro song. I spelled the second one wrong. I spelled oh. both, both words wrong, actually. <laughs> we can talk about Monster Musume. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to, but we can talk about it. I'm just We're not saying, talking about it right now. That's the intro. The hey, 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 Smith, man. Uh, anywho, um, Pokemon designs are great. The Mister Mind section was it the le- best worst? Legitimately, my favorite scene in a movie oh, in like man. a long time. That's good. It was very funny. Nice. Very, very, very funny. I'm excited. Um, I give it a ten out of ten. Oh shit! Okay, I I legitimately there was not a point in the movie that I wa- I didn't have childlike glee yeah. on my face. That's that's fantastic. I'm excited. What's um, the run approximate runtime? Like two hours? I can just Google oh, that it's later. It's not even two hours. It's like an hour and forty minutes. Oh man, which is so good. Like I I legitimately still haven't seen Endgame. Because it's three hours long. I don't know why people make movies that long. That's I just, not good. I like I like movies. I do. But three hours, that's like... That's a commitment. That is a serious commitment. Like, if I'm watching anime, I can get through, like, what, tw- nine episodes in that time frame? Yeah, or 164th of one season because <laughs> they've crazy long i start to question if i want to go to a movie after it hits two hours yeah that that's that's a reasonable question yeah let, uh, i don't know i i think that's old man talk though there's three hours okay so that's a solid port like an hour 90 minutes or whatever and then like a drive you can just go okay i'll go do that once you mm-hmm. break outside of that that's like significant fractions of your entire day. Oh well, yeah. I mean, what? That's an eighth of your day to see Endgame. Yeah. Right. And that's not that's not counting sleeping or work. Yeah, I say that that's that's more like a, almost a quarter of your day. 
a fifth. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like you're working your working day for sure. Yeah. Like you're you're like I'm a functioning human being day. Yeah. That's, um I'm I'm happy Detective Pikachu is a reasonable time because that means I could literally like get home from work, feed the cats, look for the next showing, and just see it on a weekday when there are no children. Tuesdays um, at NCG, which is the theater in Kingston. Yeah. $5 tickets. Ooh. Is it still the $1 up for the uh, the Lazy Boys? I think so. And I recommend the Lazy Boys. I, I totally recommend them. There's. I was talking to some engineers, and they were like, dude, even paying extra to get the Lazy Boy in the theater is cheaper than if you were to just go to the other Regals. Like, like they're like, it's just so affordable. It is a very affordable theater. I yeah. recommend it highly. If you have an NCG theater in your area, they're phenomenal. Now, I don't know if they're Alamo Draft House good, but they're good. Well, unless they bring you steak and a beer to your lazy boy, they're not going to be Alamo Draft House good, but they're still going <laughs> to They're still going to be good. Yeah. The other movie. Yes, this is what I'm excited about. I was in the waiting room when I was uh, replying to your uh, inst- your, your tweets uh, at Toyota. Yeah, so I decided I took yesterday off and yeah. I bought a movie called House. Okay. Or as, as it's sometimes called, Housey. Okay, what is this? Are we talking Amazon? Are we talking Amazon? Amazon. Okay, it was fifteen dollars on Amazon to own it, which I of course bought it because I saw the reviews for it, and I'm like, yeah. well, I want to own this because there's probably a decent chance I'm going to rewatch this oh, at some man. point. Uh-huh. Um, so basically, you know how there's that like joke about Japan being weird? Yeah. This movie is crystallized that. Oh, man. But you throw in uh, 1970s LSD acid trips. Holy crap. Yeah. There's, um, like, I don't want to give, like, if I talk about anything that happens into in it, it yeah. kind of ruins the experience a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, because it's just so bizarre let's just say someone turns into a pile of bananas at one point that's amazing i have to watch this so just so you know i was at toyota just regular like inspection and it's been so ever you know many miles and i'm bored i open twitter and i see a stream of consciousness like live tweet and it's i'm scrolling through twitter and i just see um uh stuff like also, the main character is literally named Gorgeous. Her room yes. has rose wallpaper. And she's a proto-magical girl. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, this got dark rapidly. The mutton chops on this dude. 10 out of 10 cat. So a letter was sent on rice paper with no envelope. And Gorgeous seems to see no problems. Stepmother is either the first day to die or saves them all. Oh my god, this cobbler and apprentice gives my life new meaning. None yes. on a train surely is a good sign. Someone threw that cat from off screen to make it look like it jumped. First death amazing. <laughs> so there's nudity and kung fu has all the best scenes. Evil reflections that turn gorgeous into fire. I like, and then it just ends with Detective Pikachu, Pikachu 10 out of 10. Like I'm well, scrolling and I'm like, John just experienced something and I need well, to access it. Here's the thing. I was yeah. live tweeting it. And then I, it reached a point where I'm like, I literally can't even describe this anymore. I'm yeah. done. Oh, I'm man. I'm literally done with this movie. Because, not not done, because, like, I recommend everyone watch it. It is yeah. the campiest, most amazing movie ever. Uh, the lore for it is the script was written after someone told the the uh, the script writer or the producer or whatever, uh-huh. um, make me a movie like Jaws. Oh, it is not a movie like Jaws in any shape or form. It doesn't sound like a movie like Jaws in any way, shape, or form it, at it's all. Also, it's also ostensibly horror, uh-huh. but it's way funnier, and it's <sighs> done on purpose. Think I've like, got to watch it. Honestly, think like Acid Trip Japanese Evil Dead. Oh, okay, I'm excited. Um, and at this point. 
Uh, I think it's about time to say. <laughs> Holy crap, that was a long one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, paranormal, and the thing that definitely lives under your bed, even if our 15-minute intro didn't seem to get that point across. I'm Brandon. I'm John. I regret nothing but everything. <laughs> yes. So today's cryptid... I'm I'm mm-hmm. f- whole cloth breaking the Brandon Cryptopedia brand. Today's cryptid is an event. It happened in 1966. It happened in New Jersey. Uh, and that that's about as much as I can say. So we're doing a United States semi-recent event. So <laughs> the opposite of everything I've ever done. New Jersey, 1966. So, a hint. Does it have anything to do with aliens? Perhaps. Actually, let me rephrase that. Yes, because the next line I wrote says, I was inspired to do something more paranormal based on your episode last week when I thought Alien Big Cats was just aliens. Oh, my God. I feel like I should know what this is. Yeah. But I legitimately don't know what this is. 19 the 1960s were a weird time especially in new jersey they were a weird time everywhere because it wasn't when was richard kuklinski running i don't know i couldn't tell you he was the ice man uh is it wasn't that there's like oh that's like new york new jersey like right on that that yeah 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 Yeah. he was he was doing um he was burying people in the Pine Barrens. So, yeah, he mm. was active then. So, okay. I'm going to say uh, 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 Richard Kuklinski, even though I know it's not it. It is not. This week, what we're going to talk about, and for some reason I've never heard of it, is the Wanaki Reservoir UFO event. What? The Wanaki Reservoir. I shared it in the, in the folder. Um, but no, no, I'm saying what? I've literally never heard of this. This is the farther we get, the more you're going to be like, I've no, why have I not heard of this? I also did a Google map um, pin uh, uh, type of dealio. So I have the area within where all the sightings occurred as described by the police. I've got the order uh, of each location that was seen based on when it happened uh, in green. So if, if anyone has access to our, was it two dollars a month? If you open yeah, $2 that two dollars a month, that Word doc, you'll have a link to this Google uh, map. Um, so I've got all Patterson? the sightings what? in order uh, in green. All of the areas uh, that are discussed in yellow, the uh, related areas in brown, and then the locations of individuals I speak about in red. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm i just saying, like, what? Because, like... There's a lot of I'm, pins on that map. I'm in that area pretty frequently. Right? Okay. Like, so, like I mean, almost every other week I'm in that area and I've never heard of this. Yeah. So what happened was on Tuesday, January 11th in 1966, Wanakoon, New Jersey, at okay. 6.30 p.m., a then 41-year-old detective, Captain Joseph Sisko of the Wanakee PD. He was also a fire sergeant and unfortunately passed in October 26, 2007, received a call over dispatch for a glowing light, possibly a fire, while his car was stationed at the Wanakee Reservoir near the Ramapo mountain range. Okay. Then, Joe hears over the radio that people in Oakland, Ringwood, Patterson, Tadawa, and Butler claim there's a flying saucer over the Wanaku. Wanaku referencing the Wanaku Reservoir. If okay. you're looking at the map I added in the copy, the first red pin is Joe's location at that time. The orange pin is Dispatch, and the yellow pins are the locations of the reported sightings based on uh, that radio call. Okay. And our man Joe seems to have found himself smack dead in the middle of all of these sightings because he's right alongside of that reservoir. He really is. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, so Joe in an interview said that 
I pulled into the sand pit, an open area to get my bearings. Cisco recalls that there was a light that looked bigger than any of the stars and about the size of a softball or volleyball. It was pulsating white and stationary, the light slowly changing to red. It stayed in the air, there was no noise, and I was trying to figure out what it was. Uh, so wait, where did he see this? By the sand pit? Yeah, by the sand pit. I, there, there's no uh, pit on Google Maps, but if you read okay. like read through all the different things, there's like a yeah, there, there's like a general area where it has to end up. I know being. what that one is. That's that's just kids playing with uh, some fireworks. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one second. I I'm just realizing something, and yes. just give me a few milliseconds to figure this out. Okay. Um. So I'm about. Uh, one second. Where is Bloomington on this map? So I'm about like, yeah, I'm like thirty percent sure, maybe even seventy percent sure. That's a wide swing. Uh, I got <laughs> lost in this area. Once. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, because I'm looking at this map, uh-huh. and so one time. Yeah. I was at the Rockaway Mall, which is close. It's outside of the area of effect uh-huh. of this thing. Um, I ended up missing my exit. Oh, okay. So I ended up in Backwoods, right? Okay. And I described it as being in Silent Hill. Oh, man. Because that area, and now I don't know if it's necessarily immediate there. There's a lot yeah. of reservoirs in this this area, and a lot uh-huh. of ponds. Um, that area is spooky at night. I can't believe it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I got like semi lost in that area one time, uh-huh. and I can totally believe that people see stuff there. Oh man! Just from okay. the sheer the sheer fact that it's kind of nightmarish back there at night because of the fog like especially oh, this is when was this when does this take place Th- this january. was uh, so, yeah january a mm, little less fog then but still uh-huh. it, it's it's spooky shoot i can believe it man the mayor at that time harry t wolf councilwoman warren or sorry councilman warren hagstrom and author barton and the mayor's 14 year old son billy were on their way to oversee the burning of the borough's Christmas trees when they heard the reports of something very white and very bright and bigger than a star hovering over the reservoir. Now, I'm sure you've got the same question I have, and that is, what's the burning of the Christmas trees? Is that the look I see on your face? No. No? Okay. I actually, that made sense to me, believe okay. it or not. Okay. That made sense to me because yeah. what they probably were doing was they gathered all the trees from around town, put them in a pile, burn them, because it's January 11th. If you have the tree. If you have the trees up still, you're a monster. Okay, good. I can skip the next paragraph. <laughs> but the thing that's uh-huh. got me yeah. is that the mayor named his son William Wolf. Yeah, why not? It's a cool name. Is that associated with something I'm not aware of? Well, well, WW? No, no. Double William dubs? Wolf. Double dubs. William Wolf. WW. Billy Wolf. That's just such a ridiculous name to me. Also, okay. like, so... My name means, uh, like, village on the hill or something like that. It's John fucking Dunham. Yeah, that's what that means. Yeah. Um, but. 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 How does someone get the name, last name Wolf? Like, where does that appear? Because I know that, the, like, what is his name? Dick K. Wolf from. Yeah, I work with a guy whose last name is Wolf. I don't know if I had to guess. Maybe it was from a period of time when they had, like, wolf hunts, and they're just, like, Maybe. a good wolf hunter. Maybe. If if his if you have a last name Wolf and you don't wear Three Wolf Moon at least once in your life... Yeah. You're, you're, dis- you're a disappointment to your name. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying. I know that this has nothing to do with it. And like I'm totally burying the lead on the br- on the bright light that was hanging in the sky, but uh-huh. I had to address the the last name of Wolf. Gotcha. Because for some reason it just jumped out at me. 
Uh, oh, one thing to tag on to the, your, your uh, summation of the burning of the Christmas trees is that uh, they don't do that anymore because of burning restrictions, but you can still do it privately if you have a license. Um, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. But nothing, nothing about that sounds wrong. Yeah. So Mayer and company decide to pull into a sand pit near the Raymond Dam uh, at the uh, headworks to meet Officer Cisco and to get a better look at the thing. So, really quick, yeah. is this the same sand pit, or is this a different sand pit? Same sand because pit. They're meeting the mayor at the sand okay, pit. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because uh, for a second there, I thought that uh, the town of Wanaku had, like... Their main export is sand. Yeah, I, I thought for a second it was just, like, you know, uh, sand is irritating, it gets everywhere, yada, 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 that yeah. thing. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that there's Tuscan sand raiders in the sand. Yeah, that, that's my Tuscan Sand Raider. You gotta watch out though, because if uh, what's his name, uh, Christian Haydenson or Christian yeah. whatever, if he finds out that they're there, all dead. All dead. If he finds out, if all anyone's dead. anywhere, they're all dead. Yeah, pretty much. You you yeah. actually we have to keep uh the fact that other humans exist away from him. Yeah, gotta hide it from O C H. Yeah, we have we have like uh there's like blinders, but they're they're more like a blindfold with blinders, so there's like yeah. no chance that he can ever see anything. <laughs> um and then they just CGI out his eyes out the blindfold every time that he's making an appearance. Uh-huh. It's a fact. <laughs> It'd be it's just way a simple scarier fact. if they CG CG if they get rid of his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's man a, that there's something related to that in detective Pikachu. oh anyway. man okay so the mayor's son billy spotted the object at once flying low and gliding oddly over the vast frozen lake like a huge star but it didn't flicker billy hmm. told reporters the next day that it was just a continuous light that changed from white to red to green then back to white my only comment so far is that it's willed that 14 year old Billy knew to say the word continuous. Yeah, 14 year old in 1966. Yeah. That just seems um, outside the normal vocab for a for a 14 year old. Also, uh what I'm hearing right now doesn't sound any different than a uh I'm going to sound like a real asshole here. Yeah. But it sounds like a a particularly advanced firework. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's like, not wrong. Like it sounds like multiple ch- a multiple chambered firework, right? Yeah. Where it like as it's going, it changes lights. So maybe maybe someone was just testing out some new fireworks. It's entirely over the reservoir would be the safest spot to do it too. It actually would be. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, although January's a weird time to be testing fireworks, but Yeah. Sand pit's a good place to do it too, because you're not going to catch it. Yeah, on well, fire. I mean that's only six months before July, so like if you're trying to fine tune something before having to go into production to have something ready by the Fourth of July, that's probably not a bad time. Scale. Actually, that is a pretty reasonable. All right, we solved it. We don't have to continue. Yeah. All right, episode over. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor Wolf would later recall uh, he described the shape uh, of the unidentified object as oval and estimated it to be uh, between two and nine feet in diameter. So comment number one, that's a big swing. Comment number two is, I doubt anyone anywhere could judge the size of any object in the sky that they were unfamiliar with, with no context in the background to judge it against. I mean, and, that's a common thing. That, yeah. like, I think we talked about that on the Thunderbird episode. Yeah. And the Ropen episode. Yeah. <laughs> and literally any episode with a flying cryptid. Yeah. <laughs> Just any time, any, anything sky-related, doubt it. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it's, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I can't even tell the height of something that I know the rough height of when it's on the ground. The, so. That's because you don't have depth perception. <laughs> uh, listen, I lost the eye in an accident. It was a freak accident involving uh, a spring-loaded missile. There's a reason why spring-loaded missiles aren't in toys anymore. Which is so sad, because they're like the most fun part of all the toys I used to have. They're like the best. You get the spring-loaded missile, and you line up all your other stuff, and you shoot it at them. Ooh, doggy! That I mean, was my jam. They ha- the, the spring-loaded missiles haven't been strong enough to do that in a long-ass time. Ah, it's sad. 
Like That's I'm pretty so sure sad. I have a an Optimus Prime right here. He's got a spring loaded missile. Oh, like the old one? Like OG? No, it's, a, it's not okay. an OG. Uh, OG Optimus Prime did not have spring loaded missiles, by the way. Um, I'm gonna shoot. Uh, I'm sorry, Optimus Primal, the the Gorilla. Yeah, that one. That one actually was pretty weak missiles too. Although my, what well, had oh, something? It might have been a Lego that I had that had had um. It was like a That's special possible. kit. That's possible. And those things would go, man. Listen, uh, a Lego Lego does is kind of extra. To be fair, though. Yeah. Um. True. Yeah, I'm I'm shooting this missile and it's like not even doing anything and this is from a couple years ago so oh man that's so because uh, what when i was younger like you could be on the far end of a room hit the button and it'd go clear across the room like they well, were good well uh what you would call it um battlestar galactica right yeah that battlestar galactica's viper i want to say uh-huh. that was the first instance of a spring-loaded missile in a toy okay and it was so it was super dangerous yeah, and that's why there's no uh, the the original like Kenner Boa Fett. Yeah, they never released the rocket launching missile because of the lawsuits revolving around the Battlestar Galactica Viper yeah. missile. The uh, there's a cool thing on the um, it was a Netflix show. It's the toys that something us. I forget the what toys it's called. that made us. Did you saw that? Oh, I, I saw it, and I met. I have a picture, a Godzilla picture, signed by one of the people who appears. Oh, hell yeah. Right on, man. Yeah. I thought it was cool that they basically told you how to make the Kenner Boba Fett. Because it was literally a toy that was basically kit-bashed from other toys that they made. Well, that's how most toys are, actually. Yeah. Well, nowadays it's a little less like that because the fact, the sheer fact of the matter is 3D printing is a thing. You only, unless you're Hasbro, in which case every toy is a kit-bash of another toy that you already make. That's true. Or just a repaint. Or yeah. a toy made for one show that never made it into that show, so you put that into a different show, and now you just change the paint, and that's... Hey, this <laughs> sounds an awful lot like the thing I was telling you about. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, so we've gone on... This this episode is definitely a tangential episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Cisco remembers... In his uh, his car's radio, uh, going bananas as calls from all over the twenty mile radius. So if you're looking at the map, that's a circle is a twenty mile radius around where Cisco's car is parked at the sand pit, uh, mm-hmm. flooded into the police headquarters. Cisco radioed Officer George Dykeman, who was on patrol nearby. Just as Dykeman received Cisco's message, two teenagers came running up to his pa- his patrol car frantically, pointing at the sky and shouting, "Look! Look!" Um, I'm going to assume that they weren't on a roll teenagers. Um, I mean, they're already, they're already kicking it. Oh, it's 630. So it's that's 630. Not that's not, that's not crazy. I mean, it's 630 in January though. Yeah. I should probably Which don't in- chart. Well, no, probably in 66, you could, I'd say now avoid charging a police car. Um, yeah, you definitely could probably do it. Also other things. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like go... in, in your other episodes where it just be like, like, kids just hanging out at midnight, get into cars with adults. Like, you had so many of those stories in your la- past episodes where it's like, what is happening? Um, so yeah. That, it, it, it was a different time and not necessarily in a good way. No, nope. Or a better I'm, way. I'm, it's I'm, just different. Listen, I'm still convinced that the, uh, the lead in the air from leaded gasoline was messing with everyone's brains. Oh, I bet. Like, I legitimately think that that there's like a a real a real tenable thing where because of the leaded gasoline, people were doing more reckless behavior than was really necessary. How else do could would anyone come up with the idea for lawn darts? That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then Civil Defense Director Bentley Spencer drove up with CD member, which I get, I don't know what CD is, it's some council, council of Def- oh, Civil Defense, that, that was dumb, I just read that. So he drove up with uh, Council Civil Defense uh, member Richard Vroom, Vrooman, 
Uh, so his, his family must have built cars in the past. Um, but they said, quote, The police radios are all jammed up. Spencer said excitedly, Dykeman and Spencer gaped at the sky along with Michael Sloat, age 16, and Peter Milligray, age 15, saying, quote, What the heck is it? Dykeman wondered out loud, Never seen anything like that in my life. Shortly after, Cisco, uh, his radio goes off again, and it says that something's burning a hole in the ice, something with bright light on it, going up and down, and then he hears over the radio, Oh boy, something just landed in front of the dam. Huh. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, I've just never heard of this. How have I just yeah. never heard of this? I literally had, I'm literally like flabbergasted that I've never heard of this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy. And then Dispatch, uh, which by the way is located about two miles from the dam, um, mm-hmm. Reservoir employee Fred Steins raced to the top of the 1,500 foot long Raymond Dam, where they then de- then described seeing a quote bolt of light shoot down as if attracted to the water, like a beam emitted from a porthole. Hmm. Cisco. So yeah. So whenever I see like these these types of descriptions, I'm always like, eyewitness testimony is such a fallible thing. Yeah. And I'm always curious what they mean when they say a bolt of light coming down. Like, do they mean a spotlight or do they mean like like a lightning bolt, right? Yeah, do they mean like a continuous light or is it something like shooting out? Exactly. Or like it, it, it has a set length that goes from point A to point B and it's gone or is it a, a steady, yeah. you know, a stable continuous source? Uh, we'll get into that um, okay. later. Don't scroll yeah. down, but I've got uh, supposedly a photograph taken that night of the object and the okay. light. Yeah. Um, Cisco, Mayor Wolf, and Town Councilman Hagstrom and Barton climb to the top of the dam. And they say, quote, uh, well, Hagstrom specifically says, quote, There was something up there that was awful bright. We don't know what it was. We thought it was a helicopter, but we didn't hear a motor. It looked like a helicopter with big landing lights on. We got goosebumps all over. Uh, when we saw where the hole was. Wait. So I guess that answers your question. It's like a continuous light. So, did they get goose humps because they saw the hole, or because the hole was in a weird place? Or did the hole look like something? Well, I guess it says where, so. Yeah, well, R.L. Stein just released a new... Yeah, so they went down to the old Walden books, picked something up. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Yep, it was all over. Like someone, oh, wait, what if the... Yeah? What if the UFO was depositing Goosebump books? Oh, that's something. Like, uh, what is it? Something about mummies, uh, say cheese and die. Um, the Slappy books, whatever the names of those were. Uh, <laughs> the Slappy Dappy. That dog uh-huh. that's eyes gets really creepy. Yeah. Uh, the G that just floats through the the world and mm-hmm. it just ruins everything. <laughs> uh huh. I got nothing else. That okay. was it. That, that was all the jokes I had. I mean, we can start talking about Jack yeah. Black, but I think that's a whole other that's a whole other tangent. Nah. Uh, Dublinsky Games shout out. Uh, so John Shuttle, another councilman who witnessed the UFO, there was uh, said that there was no doubt about it. It was there, he said. I saw it. A brilliant white object, two to three feet across in its color. No, not color. Shade kept mm. changing. Uh, I think he's just bad at describing stuff. Well, I'm just saying that because I feel like color and shade might be synonyms. They, I think you could have shade, shade, shades of a color. Like yeah. a, is a shade might be like a sub a subcategory. I think it's a subcategory. Yeah. yeah, it's like a descriptor for it, but okay. <laughs> at this point, so many locals came out to watch and so much traffic stopped at Ringwood Avenue that the reservoir police lieutenant, George Testito, had to close the gate to the reservoir. Cisco stated that people were coming out of the woodwork. So how long is this happening that, like, like, 
they didn't get a like I mean it's it's sixty six. I bet at that so... time everyone's got like radio scanners, right? Yeah, but because I know I my mean... grandfather had a radio scanner, so everyone would have been like, oh, let's go to the reservoir. Like anyone close could have been like, let's go see a weird thing. But like, how do they not? How have they not spot like shine, shown the spotlight on it or? Something like that. Because, I mean, even in the 60s, they had access to that technology. Yeah, true. Uh, to answer your your, hmm. your other question, the light stayed around for about 30 minutes. Better question. Yeah. Where is the cameras there, for this event? There, there's photographs. Okay. The, uh, okay. The, the light stayed for about 30 minutes before it flew southeast. It hovered briefly over Lakeland Regional High School in the Midvale section of town. So this is where all of those other dots come in. So I'm marking the path that all the witness accounts say it took. Um, okay. It then reappeared over the Hoodale Sandpit in Haskell, where volunteer firemen were burning Christmas trees, oh. of course. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. So this yeah. is the second sand pit. Yeah. Well, again, sand, major export. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really, that, that that's... Have you ever been to New Jersey? The whole state, it's like just sand. You know, there's paved roads, but other than that, there's like no. It's almost explicitly sand. It's kind of ridiculous. Few houses. I'm not. I'm not going to take this bait. I'm okay. not taking this bait because if I take this bait, I am in trouble. <laughs> From there, the UFO continued southeast in the direction of Pine Lakes in Wayne, New Jersey. Before the sun came up on the next day, Joe Cisco uh, would see the light. Mm-hmm. One more time, yes. I I want to stop you for a second. So, um, I'm zoomed in on Pines Lake. Yeah. And I need to know what this place is because on the eastern side of Pines Lake, yeah, uh, there's a little dot that says Pancake Hollow. <laughs> just just let me Google this for a quick second. <laughs> Go for it. Because I didn't even is, notice that. Uh, this is important to me. Wayne, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, <laughs> pancake. Is that like a street? Where you... <laughs> I don't know. It just says Pancake Hollow. <laughs> sure works, but that's in New York. So I have no idea. I okay. can't find it. What? <laughs> it's the mysterious Pancake Hollow of New Jersey. Like, that's I my next can't... episode. Yeah. I can't click on it either. Uh, I'm I'm concerned. <laughs> a government secret like is this some kind of spec op thing that's in plain sight it's entirely possible how did wayne's pancake hollow drive get its name yeah maybe it's obsec you need clearance to get to it uh there's a pancake hollow in my town apparently what yeah where how close i don't know uh it's on trulia Okay. I'm not going to – I'm obviously <laughs> – I'm obviously not going to say where I live. Can you just tell me your, your home address real quick? Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, it's uh, one, two, three, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a long road. It connects uh, 44 and uh, 299. Oh, damn. Okay. So that's a thing. Sure. Huh. Okay, so if anyone's on 299, go go to uh, Pancake Hollow. I mean, uh, it's a road. Uh, oh, it, it it's a road. I thought it it'd be look... cool if it was like a like a diner. That's that would be such a good name. Like an IHOP, but better. That would be that would be such a good name. For Pancake a Hollow. It'd be like a Pancake theme, Hollow. A theme like a Hobbit themed. Like you go in and it's like you're inside an underground place. Oh man, okay. TM 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 trademark. That's us. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta stop. We gotta we gotta stop talking about it because it's one of those things where if you get it out in the open too much, it just totally. It, it's impossible to get a good trademark because it's yeah. a public. Thing. Yeah. So, continue. It looks like there's yeah. another sighting. Oh yeah, at about 4 a.m. on the morning of January 12th, Joe saw the object moving from north to south along the horizon over the town of Wickoff. He and Wanakew Police Sergeant David Sisko, spelled differently, this is Sisko with an S, Joe Sisko with a C, uh, would take turns looking at it through a pair of binoculars. On the next day, Sisko's wife, Sisko with a C, Joe, uh, told him that she was she too had witnessed and seen what she described as a silver 
cigar-shaped object moving from south of, from their home about a thousand feet from the reservoir. Okay, so it was reptilians then. Exactly. And at this point, I'm having a hard time not imagining this person as Captain Sisko from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but that is besides the point. Also, uh, I'm impressed that, that this man, like, tracked this yeah, thing. Yeah, right, just stayed with it. That's kind of yeah. rare. It's usually I saw it and then it's gone. This guy tracked it for, at this point, like, uh, from uh, 10 hours? Yeah, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know if it was a continuous tracking because it says he saw it again. Not that he's, I'm sure he followed it for through the towns yeah, and then just... and then it says like reappeared and saw it again. So maybe he got some shot eye in there. I, I'm sure he okay. slept in his car at least a little bit. Uh, you know that happens. Yeah. The day after the event, Patrolman Jack Wardlow reported seeing a quote bright white disc. Unquote, floating in the vicinity of his home in Stonetown, uh, in the Stonetown section of Wanakew, just west of the reservoir. He said that it seemed like only a block away above Lily Mountain, maybe a thousand feet up. Wardlow said that, don't ask me what it was, but I do know it wasn't any helicopter or plane or comet. It shot literally right, sorry, laterally right and left. It stopped and moved up straight, then it moved and disappeared in the direction of Ringwood to the north. Wardlow described the object as definitely disc-shaped and at certain, at certain angles egg-shaped. Now, the the descriptions after the first sighting, I start to have doubts on because I think at this point people might, might be like saying, oh, yeah, I saw that and giving sort of yeah, to there, pop on that bandwagon. Yeah, there's a certain point when it comes to these types of flat events yeah. where it's kind of like, um, hmm, okay. Yeah. Uh, especially considering the fact that the shape has changed of this object. Exactly, right? It's now, uh, like, shiny and silver instead of just a bright light. So at this point, I'm starting to yeah. doubt a little bit of some of this testimony. It, it's uh, It's gone through several iterations through the course yeah. of this. So, Sergeant David Sisko, with an S, um, said that he was on patrol uh, about 6.30 that evening when the UFO noiselessly hovered into view, he said that it, quote, glided, and then it streaked faster than a jet, he told reporters. And when it rose, it went straight up. Again, the day after, Charles Theodora and Cisco went to the top of the dam to take a look at the bright light. Uh, they said that we looked across the water and saw a cylinder-shaped object. So now we're getting different mm. descriptions again. These are from um, articles after the fact. Um Different, different interviews and such. Theodore remembers that it was moving back and forth like a rocking chair in motion. Again, different from the it's perfectly still. We were mm -hmm. astonished. Uh, a few moments later, the object shot straight up into the sky until it was indistinguishable from the other stars. Theodora said that I didn't believe in UFOs. I thought there were a lot of bullshit. Sorry. Well, he said, I'm sure they cut out shit. That wasn't I'm, just me. I'm almost it's positive New Jersey. they cut it out. They threw yeah. that in there. Okay. That was that was definitely <laughs> yeah. that was that was definitely what it was actually. Yeah. I I can guarantee. You. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're on the same page. And then yeah. I saw it. it was a breathtaking sight. Something I'll never forget. After the January 1966 sightings, uh, radar was installed atop the reservoir dam. So they installed radar because of this. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Seven well, months. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. Seven months that later, is. on uh, October 10th, 1966, uh, at 9 p.m., Robert J. Gordon of Pumpton Lakes and his wife Betty saw what they described as a single saucer-shaped object about the size of an automobile, glowing in white uh, brilliant. So this is closer to the original description. At first, I thought it was a star, Betty Gordon recalled, but I thought, to, thought it to be moving. Um, it had a definite pattern. Uh, it would move to the left of the tower and then back directly over the tower. I'm sure it was not a star or a planet. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Officer Bob Gordon of the Pumpton Lake PD, so they must have called the cops or got wind of it, called police headquarters and requested that patrolmen be dispatched to his home. Officer Lynn Wetback responded, but was told that the saucer was already gone. The Gordons and their neighbor. Of course it was. That's how this works. This is closer uh -huh. to a normal UFO story now. Yeah, now this is now this is becoming like pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, who had also witnessed the UFO, told what bank that the object was headed in the direction of the Wanaku Reservoir, right? So it's gone right back to that original place. Uh, mm-hmm. The officer radioed Wanaku police and notified Sergeant Ben Thompson, a six-year vet uh, of night duty with the Wanaku Reservoir Department Police. S- imagine I said those words in the right order. Who yep. was driving his patrol car south uh, along the, at the time. Thompson saw the UFO flying directly near him, quote, on dead man's curve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just imagining the UFO playing chicken with him. Oh yeah. That would be so good. That'd be so good. Right? Like yeah. that that would be a pretty good scene where like he's he's coming around Dead Man's Curve and uh-huh. all of a sudden there's a there's a UFO. You can see inside of the UFO in a rare instance where there's like a windscreen and it's uh-huh. like a greaser it's a greaser alien and he's got oh, like man. leather and, and yeah. studs and he's got a cigarette and he's like yeah because he's making he's making the ufo make noises he's like we're the tunnel rats you're never gonna get out of this vault yeah that's the correct reaction (laughs) yeah it is considering the fact that fallout 3 came out when oh long ago (laughs) uh also i think it was tunnel snakes tunnel snakes okay no 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 I just thought about when it came out, and now I hate myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. It came out two Fallout games ago. Yeah. Uh, actually, three. Three? Yeah, three. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw the object coming. So maybe it was playing chicken. He saw it coming right at him. He said that okay. there was an extremely bright light. It was a bright white light, bright like when a light bulb is about to blow. It was very low. It appeared about 75 feet over the mountain. Um, That would be Windbeam Mountain. Uh, It traveled very quickly and with a definite pattern. First right, then up and down, then repeating the pattern. It's trying to juke them. Distances are deceiving, but it might have covered the area of about a half mile. It then went straight over my head, stopped in midair... Backed right up. Okay, so I'm going to cut myself off here in mid-paragraph. I was driving home the other day, and uh, this was Thursday. Oh. And I pull over. There's an ambulance behind me. So I pull over, mm. let it pass. And I start going. And then I catch up to the ambulance. So I'm going 45, right? So I'm like, this, what? you go Speed up, Amber Lamps. You're literally the yeah, fast yeah. guy. And then it does like a three-point turn because it, it missed the driveway, I guess. Are you So it turns serious? around. I go my way. I'm at my parents' house for maybe 30 minutes. I start to go back home. There's a road crew working on a light pole. I think it hit a light pole on the way back <laughs> after it missed that turn. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel terrible for whoever called the ambulance, but. Yeah. Just remember, don't get hurt at like 830 on a Thursday. And you're like, oh, good. no, don't. Don't. That's a rule. Yeah. <laughs> um also related yeah that just reminded me last night i i went to the late showing of detective pikachu so i was leaving okay. kingston around eleven forty. i think you tweeted at like 2 a.m so that that, that checks oh out. i tweeted it i tweeted at yeah. 2 a.m but okay i because i i was up until 2 a.m but i because i was watching good mythical morning of course you were <laughs> uh-huh because that's the way i work um Anywho, we're driving back in by uh, somewhere in Port Ewan. Yeah. Um, somebody's just stopped on the the right side of the ro- like on our side of the road going yeah. north uh, southbound. Uh huh. Like stopped on the road. I'm pull- I'm coming around the corner going like uh, 55. I yeah. realized that they're stopped on the road, and oh. I got within like probably a hundred yards of them before they got out of the lane. That's ridiculous. You know what the worst part is? That what? is the second time that's happened to me on that road. That's, I was, so this was on 28 and then on, so, ooh, super local talk. Okay. So I was yep. heading home from work. I'll try to be more g- generic. I'm behind this car with a Florida plate on it, and it drives off 28, like off the road, then back on. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy doing? And then we get to a traffic light. And he stops, traffic goes, and then the like there's so it's five cars, this car, then me. Mm-hmm. 
all traffic goes and he's just not going forward. He's just stopped at a green light with like car lengths in front of him. So then I've got a line of cars honking behind me. He goes, he sucks at the, 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 uh, the traffic circle. Mm -hmm. And then we're going and, uh, he's keeping like seven car lengths in front. I'm like, what the heck? He's not, I don't know what the heck was going on. But, uh. It's crazy. It, it, like it's bad enough where he's afraid to pass on the right because like they're just not staying in their lane. Oh yeah, I I I get super nervous with that kind of thing. Yeah. What, Lissa? Oh yeah, yeah. I did leave out an important part. I don't know. I I definitely didn't mention this. In both of those cases, the car was facing us. Ooh. On the wrong side nice. of the road, and in yeah. one case, there was a guardrail between the two lanes. <laughs> so i have no idea how the individual ended up there it was magic i don't know that's there's a lot of people driving the wrong way down the road well recently here's the, here's the other thing you can yeah. never underestimate the stupidity of a drunk driver yeah like <laughs> honestly you can never underestimate the ability of a drunk person to do, achieve what they want to do or just a sober person in a minivan in the stockade well, district because that's let's all be one-way streets and there's well, like i've gotten stuck like halfway down a one-way because there's a minivan driving the wrong way i mean like where you didn't get the hint it's one lane wide and all the cars are facing the opposite direction you're going come on well uh, well minivans minivans change your brain chemistry and maybe a more it. aggressive driver, <laughs> which is bizarre considering the fact that usually minivans are carrying children. Yeah. Well, but maybe that's why. <laughs> that, that might be. But no, that's they're just so blue because they'll, they'll be like the windshield Navy SEAL mm -hmm. hand signal where they like point at themselves. They're like, oh, me. And then they point like, oh, I'm supposed to be going this way. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're you're going the wrong way. So now you just need to. Back up down an entire street and through an intersection, so good luck, because I'm not going to pull over and let you keep going. <sighs> hate people. <laughs> it then started to zigzag from left to right. That was a super long tangent in the middle yeah. of a paragraph, but I had to, we had to get those, those stories yeah. out of our brains. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, that's all we'd be thinking about in the background this whole time. It's it was back. doing tricks. Making a cute angular turns instead of gradual curved turns, it looked as big as a parachute. I got out of my car uh, and continued to launch for almost five minutes. It was about 200 to 250 yards away. Again, I doubt these distances. It was the shape of a basketball. He could have just said sphere. We all know what those are. And the center scooped out uh, and a football thrust through it. Okay, well, never mind. Wait, what? Wait. Mm. So you know those like old Christmas ornaments? Yeah, so I assume it's like like one of those. Why That's not say how it looked like? A, why Old not Christmas say it looked like a like a Christmas ornament? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, at that time he could have probably just said Christmas ornaments instead of old Christmas ornaments. Yeah, yeah, he could have say he could have said, "Hey, you know those new types of Christmas ornaments that showed <laughs> yeah. up?" Yeah, and he's like, "No, not the tinsel with actual lead." <laughs> no, no, no the the Christmas ornaments. They also have lead. It's lead paint. Yeah, let's it's not all lead. let's. Everything Let's not pretend light. that anything is. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the football appeared to be perpendicular to the basketball. I know what he's trying to describe. I will say that's not a thing. And sometimes standing up on its end. Uh, there were two different gadgets. It didn't make much noise, but as it was moving, it raised water beneath it. I watched it maneuver, stirring up brush and water in the reservoir. It was up about 150 feet. And I had difficulty seeing because the light was bright and it blinded me. So perhaps he's just blinded it is bad at describing, but it's an actual like normal thing with normal means of propulsion that will disturb objects under it, say a helicopter. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. The fact of the matter is a helicopter will stir up brush and water in the reservoir. Yeah. <laughs> like, the other one, the first one is a little weird, but this one is... Uh, more m easier to this, describe through normal means. Yeah, this one yeah. is more mund mundane because, like, yeah, uh, acute angular turns is something that helicopters can do. They are about as big as a parachute, especially in those days. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's let's uh -huh. let's keep going. 
Motorists along Westbrook Road also began to notice the strange light hovering in the sky and slowed their cars to get a better look at it. Fearing a collusion, Thompson went back to his patrol car and uh, he turned on the dome light, the red dome light on top as a warning. The instant it started to flash, he remembers, the object sped away and over the reservoir um, without passing over the horizon disappeared. After three or four minutes, it went out as if a light bulb had been turned out and it seemed Mm -hmm. as if it had gone right into the mountain. I was Mm -hmm. dumbfounded. It was little more than frightening. The Wanakee police... Yeah? It's entirely possible that the light bulb did go out, though, isn't it? Like, if it's a thing that has a light bulb, the only thing you're seeing is the light. So... Oh, yeah, there's an off switch. Someone could have hit the off switch. Uh, Okay. Especially at a distance where it's hard to make out if they just hit an off switch and you're like, it disappeared. Like, Where did it go? Yeah. It's like, it's like, uh... Making a baby think you cease to exist. Exactly, because object permanence is a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently, my cats have object permanence issues, too, because the second that the food leaves their bowl, they think, oh, God, I've never been fed ever. Did someone feed me? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. My stomach hurts. <laughs> that's fair. That, I think that's, that, that's the, many cats. Mm-hmm. The uh, I got an automatic cat feeder now. So that's fun. I would I would love to get one of those. Yeah. However, uh they given lock. the fact that Jiro has literally figured out how to open nearly every door in my house. I think this is actually pet proof. I mean I've got to test out yet, but there are times where like I'm just not gonna be home and so instead of needing to ask someone to come feed the cats, now I just have an automatic cat feeder I can use from time to time. Um the Wanaki police station telephones were deluged with calls from nervous residents who called in sightings and asked for answers. Quote, the switchboards were completely jammed, or called an officer at the Wanaki Reservoir Station. So was Pompton Lakes. There must have been 150 calls. Some witnesses may have their doubts uh, about what it is they saw that night, but Ben Thompson was convinced it was, was a UFO. The official response mm-hmm. was that after midnight... On the first sightings over the Wanakee, word came from Stewart Air Force Base in Newburgh, New York, that an Air Force helicopter with a powerful beacon had been on a mission over the area about the same time the UFO was spotted at 6.15 a.m. The following morning, however, an official spokesperson for Stewart Air Force Base, Major Donald Sherman, denied that any such aircraft had been on any such mission that night, and that the helicopter explanation had been out without any foundation. The next day, the Pentagon said that the mystery object was indeed a helicopter with a powerful beacon. So, I know that everyone likes to jump to conspiracy theory on this. Yeah. But, I do want to say that that would definitely be what someone in charge would say if something happened without their off. Oh, yeah. They'd be like, no, this did not happen. Yeah. And then the Pentagon probably came through and was like, no, it definitely happened. Yeah. This dude's just an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, what uh-huh. the way I read this is not a cover-up. I read this as a guy screwed up and his, cha- his chain of command screwed up. And now yeah. he now he's been embarrassed, so he's trying uh-huh. to double like double down on it. And then the then his higher up is like, "No, you screwed up." Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah, that is literally what I'm reading. Mm-hmm. But continue. McGuire Air Force Base in Wrightstown said that the object was a weather balloon, which had been launched from Kennedy International Airport. Thirteen years after the 1966 UFO sightings at the Wanakee Reservoir, the nonprofit organization. Vestigia, which was based in Byram, prepared a detailed study of the strain lights that were witnessed. Vestigia, uh, an organization that seeks to provide plausible scientific explanations for unexplained phenomena, came to the conclusion that the glowing lights that were seen over the Wanakee were the result of seismic pressure from nearby Ramapo Fault. The fault okay. in the Earth's crust creates electrical energy uh, within the quartz bearing rocks underground. At times, an extreme pressure this highly charged field will supposedly escape into the atmosphere. Jones asserts that under just the right climactic conditions, air particles, um, they're, they're saying it was just rocks and shit. Um, yeah. uh, 
let's okay so at this point i'd like to point out that while i find evidence of many of these people existing um none of the supposed interviews or newspapers that they were interviewed by uh i found any evidence of whatsoever Uh, I, i found a single sketch from the year after but nothing reliable so um, this is I know we talk about this literally every week but this is really the thing that kills trying to do research on the paranormal There's so there's a very good reason why I went with this even though it's very different from what I usually do and I'll get yeah. to that we're, we're almost done but I'll yeah. very much explain it at the end Okay um also this you scroll down a little that's supposedly the photograph taken of the object Um that looks fake Uh huh like, uh, like, I'm not going to lie, that looks uh, like nothing. So, um, everywhere I could find, all points, even across... So, I'll just read what I wrote, because I'm sure I thought ahead of time, instead of me trying to re-say it now, uh, just off the top of my head. Uh, most leads point directly back to the single source, including things that would discount it. So, even the reports from the Pentagon and other Air Force bases trying to disclaim it, came from the same single source. This appears to be an incredible story, but from what I could find, I believe believe this to be an incredibly popular whole cloth fabrication by Weird New Jersey uh, using known figures from the time in that area. It is notable. They were using real known figures. None of the reporters named, I could find any evidence having them uh, of anyone ever existing. Um, uh, uh, either in journalism what? or news, because they're supposedly news-like things. None of that ever happened. Um, the only thing I could find was a suppose was a partial scan of a newspaper, the Sunday Star Ledger, that I could not find ev- any evidence. Like it's a real newspaper, but that paper in particular, the scan from Weird New Jersey, only exists in the article from Weird New Jersey. What? They completely, from the best I could tell, I could be wrong, fabricated the entire thing, including interviews and the people saying, here's our real explanation of it. And it got, here's why I'm talking about it, because this is, this is something that makes our job harder for the show. Because this is popular, there are real newspapers, including like USA Today, that did articles on the Wanakee Reservoir sightings. Oh, and directly, basically comped from the Weird New Jersey article without directly sourcing it. Oh my god. So this is what makes our job very hard. And why, like, it's UFOs, it's modern. This is why I was like, I have to do this, even though it's different from what I did. Because it's so believable because they list times, locations, real individuals, police officers. But any digging at all... Nothing that I could find exists outside of this article, but it's been re like copied and posted and re written so many times that it's everywhere. I I I honestly don't know what to say. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Like that's literally the only response someone could have. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and there were oh my god so like, there that's weren't even the proper response <laughs> there weren't even citations in the weird new jersey article right correct all the interviews they never said the name of the reporter or what station they worked at there was uh in the newspaper scan i looked up that newspaper it's a real paper but i couldn't find that particular day with that article out there at all um Every person who had a real name was a public figure that was Googleable, because just... you could have literally just Googled New Jersey government 1966 and like just found like these public individuals. And like the the weirdest thing about this is, it is literally entirely possible that if this was written in say the 90s, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh a decent amount of those individuals no longer be alive potentially. Right. Especially yeah. now, uh-huh. if you wrote it in the nineties the or the two thousands, 
there's a decent chance that a majority of the individuals be not like not alive anymore and unable to refute it. Yeah. You know, um, there's also a good chance that the people who are still alive never read the article. Yeah. Like, and then if no one did follow up work, then it's it's totally possible yeah. that it just slips through the cracks because like weird New Jersey wasn't even, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think like they were making books that m- went out past the the zine format until yeah. like two thousand eight, I want to say, uh, or two thousand seven, something in there. I don't know. It's possible. Oh, my neighbor's generator turned on. So if anyone hears anything, that's my neighbor's generator. Um. Yeah. Now, it could be possible that I could just eat my shorts and that the article has become way more popular than the original sources to the point they're unfindable. But, from the best I could tell, this is just... I mean, it's good. Whoever did it did a good job, right? Because if you're going to write bunk, that's the right way to write bunk. They're real people, they're real figures, they're real places. There's a timeline, it's specific. And then there's people that make reasonable counterpoints. Um, I will say this po- article's gotten so popular that there's a... Supp- Supposedly, a Wanaku vortex that has uh, like lizard folk and such in it. So this has um, spun off other hmm. bits of crazy, um, but it's 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 <laughs> it's a thing. I I like it's hard to even make jokes about this because it's just like what? Yeah, like like what? What? Ex- right? I just don't have words. Because I'm just... It's impressive, and this is this is more on a, a, a bigger scale than what we usually have to deal with when we're researching cryptids, but got to the point where it's looking at it, and I was like, I have to do a whole episode, because, like, this, the, the when you're trying to do... Like, the whole thing seems plausible until you start really trying to do any form of looking under the surface that's just insane yeah I'm just upset quite frankly (laughs) okay alright I'm broken so (laughs) as always uh, if you Man, this is just disappointing to me. <laughs> uh, I aim to disappoint. Uh, that's not great, but okay. We we have a website. It's it's cryptopediacast.com. All the links that we're about to, to spew at you are on that site. Um, our Instagram and our Twitter are at cryptopediacast. If you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Um, we have a Patreon. It's in the show notes. Uh, if you are a $5 a month or more subscriber to the Patreon, meaning you're a jackalope, you get your name set occasionally when we remember to do it. <laughs> uh, we generally do it twice a month. Uh, so thanks again, uh, Clay Sinclair and Marty Von Party. Again, uh, best names in the biz. Uh, we appreciate your support and hopefully yeah. we can find more stories that are not just wholesale fabrications by Weird New Jersey. Yeah. I, by the way, had some fun. Oh, so I'll add this. To the, uh, I'll, I'll cut you off and let you finish. Yeah. So we also started um, for uh, uh, like Jackalopes and the such streaming um Ma- specifically mm-hmm. Magic the Gathering Arena, but it's really just any time I'm playing a computer game, I'll just turn it on, because why not? Yeah. Um, so if you want uh, information for that, it's on the Patreon page, mm-hmm. and you'll see how to view it and how to interact for for voice chat and stuff like that. Had a nice few games with uh, uh, the old Clay Sinclair there, playing some, uh, some Magic the Gathering Arena, and guess who has four Snapcaster mages purchased the day that episode dropped? Clay Sinclair. He bought Snapcaster Mages? Was that before, like... before he even heard the episode, right? So he bought them, then was listening to it, and was like, oh shit. That's amazing. Right? 
I, I, I just don't. That's that's wild. That's totally, totally wild. Yeah. Well, I, I know that I see. Uh, <laughs> give me a sec. Because that's the episode when we were talking about the price increase. And he said he was listening to it and he was like, no shit, the price did increase. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I think we can at least point people to the uh, the the channels, though. You're Donkey underscore Hands. Yep. And I'm Eason Grimm Plays, which is a name I came up with when my main character when I played D&D was Eason Grimm, a edgelord druid. <laughs> uh, my, new, my new character is Gorgo the Wise, a... Uh, I don't know if he's edgelord. I'd say he's extra. Gorgo, Gorgo is extra. Like, Gorgo no... is a... What was this class? A barbarian lizard folk that had the most points in wisdom? Yes. He was a barbarian lizard folk who had, I think, a 16 in wisdom. <laughs> uh, I don't remember exactly. Um, I actually took a stat upgrade to wisdom after the fact because it was so a part of his character. It had to be, man. Uh, my partic- One of my favorite moments of uh, Gorgo was... There were two great more moments that Gorgo had. One was when he, uh, well, he, he hated Vistani with a fiery passion of a thousand burning suns. Yeah. Um, we were playing uh, Curse of Straw, by the way. Uh-huh. So he ended up getting a Vistani curse in which he was turned into a, like, a pale-skinned lizard human. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Which I hated. Uh, and then there was another time that he took a bone and literally rip the bone lengthwise apart to to intimidate a group of people who are trying to kill Strahd because it wasn't a part of his plan yet to kill Strahd. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anywho. Uh, also, if you donate $2 or more a month and you're in our Hodag tier... You get access to the show notes. Well, not the show notes. The, the show scripts, I guess you could say, and research. Um, that includes a number of things, and it varies episode to episode what's in those. Mm-hmm. Uh, could be like pictures. This, it could be custom yeah. Google Maps that you did You did it first, and I thought that was a good idea, so I did yeah. one for this one. Uh, yeah. I think we did one for – what was the, what was the first one we did? It was uh, uh, – it was the – I would have oh, to oh, open oh, the spreadsheet. Oh, it's the river monster. It's the river monster. The um... wow, this is great audio. Oh yeah, uh, was it the it's... Uh, Murphy Burroughs mud monster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Murphy yeah. Burroughs mud monster. Uh, that was the first one we did that for. Uh, we're probably going to do a few more of them. I kind of have one for next week, but it's not ready yet. Okay. Uh, but I have the episode copy done because. <laughs> um, additionally, we have a Facebook group where we'll post announcements and such. Uh. Generally, though, we also post it to Twitter as well. It's just we have a Facebook group, too, if you prefer that. Um, if you enjoy the show, please rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, feel free to send them. A uh, little bit of a sneak peek. Next week's story is a listener requested story. Ooh. Um, Ooh. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. It's uh, the hotness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what have... I want to bring back from from uh, middle school? Mm-hmm. Triple sick nasty. Triple sick nasty. That's triple sick nasty. Triple sick nasty. Yes. I don't remember triple sick nasty from middle. It school. might have been a thing specific to the Schultzes. Oh. Okay. Now I might remember it. <laughs> One of them is responsible for the first time I ever really cursed. <laughs> oh, man. I'll let you guess which one. <laughs> I bet I can. <laughs> um, so if you also have, if you have any creepypasta or cryptopasta, uh, I might read them for bonus episodes. I have some SCPs lying in wait for bonus episodes. Hell and yeah. Brandon has finished another another bonus episode that he's having some difficulties in uploading to places. Yep, I just did two lovers lanes and one new one, lascivious lore. 
mischievous lore. Yeah. I, I I know you sent me that, but I didn't. I for whatever reason I thought it was like lascivious lane and i was no. very confused for a second <laughs> that makes more sense okay um anywho oh yeah my turn <laughs> yeah we've done 35 of these now i was navigating my file structure you can find me on Instagram <laughs> at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, my Instagram is at mu2057, and it mainly consists of toy and cat pictures. True. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham, and there is an extremely long thread about how to on that. My website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. I think things are just getting weirder. Yeah, I mean, we're at 35 episodes now, so that's... The fucking 15-minute long intro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it happens.